heard it confirmed from the AX-1 pilot, Larry Connor, the hatches uh, to the uh, SpaceX Dragon Endeavor and the private astronaut crew inside were closed at 6.26 p.m. Central Time. Now, a sequence of events will occur in between our coverage. We're going to wrap up here shortly, uh, but in the meantime, uh, what will happen is uh, on the other side of the hatch, uh, the International Space Station Commander, Tom Marshburn, his job is not done. He's got a couple more hatches that he has to close, uh, including the APAS hatch. Of course, he's taking some photography, making sure there's no fog or foreign object debris, uh, making sure that the hatch is, uh, has an airtight seal uh, before he continues methodically step-by-step step to close the Uh, it's going to create an area in between the two hatches called the vestibule, uh, which will be at the space station pressure above 14 pounds per square inch. we got to get that down to zero, to zero uh, near vacuum. It's a very methodical process that takes about an hour, uh, so we'll continue to monitor that while we're off air. Uh, and then, of course, we'll go through the sequence uh, of undocking. Once the undocking command is sent, uh, it'll be about five minutes of hatches unlatching and uh, umbilicals retracting, and of course a couple of thrusts to actually physically push uh, the SpaceX Dragon Endeavor away from the International Space Station. We're still tracking towards uh, an undocking on time for now at 7.55 p.m. Central Time. Uh, stay tuned for our coverage. We'll be joined by SpaceX and Axiom Space for our undocking coverage where you can get the latest uh, undocking times, and we'll be covering the operations as they undock and uh, exit the approach ellipsoid. Uh, this is uh, about a one kilometer sphere, a little bit more than that, uh, around the International Space Station. It's, a, it's really a marker uh, for the end of joint operations. Once they're outside of the vicinity of the International Space Station, the flight of the uh, AX-1 private astronauts and the SpaceX Dragon Endeavor to a splashdown off the coast of Florida is truly in the hands of uh, SpaceX and Axiom Space. <laughs> Welcome everybody to the Space News Pod's coverage of the AX-1 undocking. The undocking will start at about 7.55 p.m. Eastern time and we're just waiting on that and we are waiting for NASA's feed to come back. Spoke with NASA the other day so we could get permission to do this live stream. So I wanted to start up a little bit early. I got a little bit of the uh, hatch closing done. Got that in there. Welcome everybody. Hey, what's up? Very low audio, I will F5. Thanks, Jim. Uh, working on that right now. Good day, says Tassie. Thanks, Tassie. Good day to you as well. We're hanging in there. We're, we're hanging out, waiting for the undocking to happen. And it's going to be a beautiful, beautiful undocking tonight. This is the first all-private mission to the International Space Station. And it's going to have a return trip Sunday evening. That's tonight. After a lot of delays, which dragged the mission out for about a week longer than was expected because of weather and other inopportune circumstances. So... The crew's coming back tonight. There's four people. Michael Lopez Alegria, uh, who's a former NASA astronaut, who's now an Axiom space employee, who is the mission commander. Israeli businessman, uh, Aiton Stib, who's a... Uh, uh, and then there's a Canadian investor, 
um, Mark Pathy and an Ohio based real estate magnate, Larry Connor, all coming back tonight. They're going to be leaving the space station aboard the Crew Dragon capsule tonight. So we're just waiting on them, waiting on NASA, waiting for the crew to come back. First time watching. Thanks, Amy. If everybody, anybody's new here, uh, we do live shows every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And we are doing this live show with the blessing of NASA tonight. So thank you, NASA, for allowing us to use your stream. The stream will be on when uh, we get uh, the, the feed from NASA back. So we have to wait. We have to wait. Uh, tomorrow is the splashdown, actually, uh, JM. I don't believe NASA is going to be covering the splashdown, unfortunately. I think it's only going to be Axiom Space. I believe 8:55 p.m. Eastern time tonight is the undocking of the Axiom AX1 Crew Dragon from the International Space Station. So we're starting a little bit early. Gonna do a little bit of talking. Gonna hang out a little bit. It's a Sunday afternoon. Beautiful day here in Brownsville, Texas, about 20 miles away from SpaceX headquarters at Starbase, Texas, where they're building Starship. The hatch closure looked like it was successful. The crew is offline right now. They're in the they're in the capsule awaiting the uh, the undocking, and NASA is uh, awaiting more coverage feed from here on out. So stay tuned for that. We'll be here for you. So thanks for hanging out while we get our coverage feed back. I know we started a little bit early tonight, but I had to get a little bit of that hatch closing. So thanks to everybody who's come out a little bit early. It's Monday in Sweden. Sweet. Very cool. Let's get the show in the sky, says Tassie. Yeah, we let's get this show on the... I guess you can't do it on the road, so you have to do it in the skies. <laughs> Uh, welcome, Amy, again. So splash, Splashdown will be tomorrow morning. Or tomorrow afternoon, I believe. Sorry, I, I don't have a specific time right now. I don't have it up right now. But Axiom Space will be covering that. Um, so this is a, a commercial market, low earth orbit, kind of new space era mission to the International Space Station via Axiom Space. Very cool, um, very cool mission too. They did a bunch of science up there and, um, they're getting ready to come back home. So all the science they did up there, very important. For the future of space travel, these are the sort of early steps for um, for NASA and commercial space to get more people to the space station, to get more people to uh, the moon, to Mars eventually. Setting a few things up here as well. So don't mind this. Got 
got a little bit of time before the undocking happens. Not much time though. It's uh, 7.55 EDT when they'll start the undocking process. This is the docking of the AX-1 mission that you're seeing right now on your screen. SpaceX will cover Splashdown. Yep, uh, SpaceX and uh, Axiom Space are both doing uh, live streams of the Splashdown. The crew got a few extra hours in space, Jim. Yeah, they did. They had a few extra days up there. It's like a little extra vacation in space, which is really neat. Here's a little bit more information for you. I'm going to jump on screen eventually, but right now I'm just going to do some audio. So Houston, Texas is where Axiom Space is. And uh, they book rocket rides. They provide all the necessary training and they coordinate flights to the International Space Station, basically for anybody who can afford it. So these four people that are on the AX-1 mission, Michael Lopez Algeri, uh, Allegria, sorry, um, Ethan Stipe, uh, Mark Pathy, and Larry Connor, they could all afford this flight. And the next day, they're going to be free flying through orbit before coming back in, coming back into the atmosphere in parachuting to a splashdown landing off the coast of Florida. It, it's going to be about 1 p.m. Eastern on Monday, according to NASA's human space flight head, Kathy. And Kathy said, uh, Kathy Loiter said, we're now targeting 8.55 Eastern Sunday, April 24th for AX-1 undocking from the space station. It was April 23rd. AX-1 splashdown is about 1 p.m. Monday, April 25th at the moment. No impact to crew. Four's Wednesday, April 27th launch date, but still watching the uh, weather closely. All teams are go for Axiom Mission 1 undocking tonight. So at the conclusion of the weather briefing today, NASA, Axiom Space, and SpaceX all elected to proceed with today's undocking of the Axiom 1 AX-1 mission from the International Space Station at 8.55 p.m. EDT. 8.55 p.m. EDT. Uh, AX-1 Commander... Um, Michael Lopez, Allegria, Larry Connor, and the other two aboard close the hatch at around 6.50 p.m. It's a little bit late, though. They were a little bit late with the hatch closed, but that's totally fine. And they're going to be beginning the journey back home in the SpaceX Dragon Endeavor with a splashdown off the coast of Florida, approximately 1.06 p.m. Eastern, April 25th. Axiom Space and SpaceX will resume coverage of Dragon's reentry and splashdown at noon Monday, April 25th. And they're going to splashdown, like I said before, at about 1.06 p.m. This is all EDT. So set your clocks accordingly. Set your timers. Set your alarms. Going to be historic. Already a historic mission. Axiom Space is the first uh, private mission to the International Space Station. All private mission to the International Space Station. 
Uh, Amy Fox, anyone here been lucky enough to see a launch? Bucket list. Um, me, I saw a launch. I saw Crew 2 launch. That was really neat. I uh, saw it when I was in Florida. I'm hoping to do another launch um, sometime in June, and I'm trying to figure out when the best or what the best launch will be. I'll be here for the Starship launch, SpaceX's Starship launch as well. Uh, anybody else here in chat? Anyone else been to a rocket launch? <laughs> uh, why come you're not on web, uh, webcam today? I'm waiting for the show to start. Uh, this is all sort of an intro, so it's all just going to be audio for a little bit. Because being on camera for three hours um, takes a lot. So audio only is really nice. Got to pace yourself. It's a long time. Yeah, I saw the Crew 2 launch, Amy. It was uh, it was a beautiful night, or beautiful morning, I should say. It was about 4.30 in the morning when I woke up to see this launch, and it was beautiful. One of the best things I've ever done in my life was go to that launch. My first launch, um, I missed. It was a, it was another SpaceX uh, crew launch, so I missed the, the uh, original spot that I was filming it from. And um, there were just too many people there. There were like a thousand people waiting to see this launch, the Crew 2 launch. Uh, luckily, the night before, I staked out a position about three miles north of where I was that day. And uh, when I got up there, there were probably like, I don't know, 10 cars up there, as opposed to 100 cars at the first spot. So... I set up my camera, filmed it all. Funny thing is, I had a camera with a 200 millimeter lens, which is a pretty good zoom lens. Uh, funny thing is, I had my phone attached to my camera, and uh, my phone, for some reason, got a better shot than my camera did. Uh, they were very similar, but the the, the phone was a, a tad bit better. No idea why. All my settings on my camera were great. The lens was great. The camera itself is really nice. Um, so I'm not sure what it was, but I think the sensor in my phone at the time was pretty legit. So sensor in that compared to the sensor in my camera. Uh, it's a 4K camera, so I have no idea what, what the deal was. I've shot so many things with it, but for some reason that morning, um, didn't work out too well. But I got the opportunity to see that launch and I was super excited. Um, even though I was filming it, I still got to experience, you know, the, the hope that people had. That's one of the cool things about rocket launches. You could hear it in people's voices. Um, you could hear it in people's voices when you're there and you can hear how excited the kids are to see these launches and not only the kids, but the parents that bring their kids and how excited the parents are for the kids. Yeah. Very cool. Very, very cool. You can see all those people um, super excited about rocket and um, about rockets and space flight. It's similar um, when you go to Starbase. So I live, I live like I was saying before, uh, about 25 miles away from Starbase. Every time I go down there, I went down there this morning. Every time I go down there, I meet a few people. And the people that are there genuinely are excited about human spaceflight. So it was very similar, but the people that were at the Florida launch, it was like an event. You know, when you go to see Starbase and SpaceX is a, a starship, it's kind of a curious thing. And when you go see a rocket launch in Florida, it seems like it's like it's more like a bigger deal. And I'm not sure how to how to express that, but it does seem like there's a little bit of a bigger build up to it. Uh, you said, I said, I thought you said it was your brother or someone else filming the launch, the far away one. Nope. That was me. I was in Florida. I woke up at four 30 for that one. <laughs> that was not fun. The waking up part wasn't the best part, but, uh, getting to see the launch was a hundred percent worth it. 100% worth it. I had to move my hotel room, 
um, the night before too, because I was really far away from the launch site. I was about, I don't know, 15 miles more away. And I was closer to Orlando and morning traffic in Orlando was just kind of crazy, uh, especially for a launch. So I moved to, uh, from the really nice hotel I had, um, I got a really good rate on it, uh, cause it was off season and, uh, like I got really lucky to get it at a super cheap rate. And then I got a different hotel, which was closer to the launch, which was more expensive, but it was a little tiny, like a little roadside motel. Uh, but it was more expensive than my nice hotel, but it had like a, like a, you know, a bed with like, wasn't that comfortable. <laughs> it was a small place. So it was kind of funny, you know, seeing the, uh, seeing the two kind of side by side, if you think about it, you know, you would spend all that money at a nice hotel and then you'd go 15 miles down the road, just a little tiny, you know, little shack basically. Um, and you, you pay, you know, you pay more, probably almost double. And luckily I had it in my budget for that. I didn't spend that money on anything else. So I was very happy about that. So we do these live shows every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at uh, noon CDT. So if you're into space flight, if you're into NASA and SpaceX, it's a news roundup show. Um, very interactive chat. Myself have conversations. We talk about what's going on with space flight, uh, starship SLS Artemis program landing on Mars. We get into some, some heated discussions. Sometimes and it's really fun. Like there's never any bad blood. Um, you know, it's uh, it's a really, really fun atmosphere. So if you're interested in that, please subscribe to the show. Uh, it'll just take a second. It's free. It's easy. Or if you don't want to subscribe yet, uh, hit the like button. It's easy. Like if we could get up to 40 likes, that would be amazing. We're yeah, we're at 71 concurrent viewers. So thank you so much, everybody who's viewing the video right now, watching this. Um, as we set up for the AX1 undocking, thank you so much for being part of this. So if you can give it a like, thank you so much. Like I was saying before, so it helps out so much. And I know other YouTubers say this, uh, it helps out so much. Just those simple likes it takes a second to hit the like button and it helps out shows like this. You know, I do it to my other two the things that I watch, you know, give it a little thumbs up. Super easy. Um, but yeah, that's, that's a, uh, that's a really, really quick way to help out free, easy. I'm just curious in neutral, want to know more, um, scammed. <laughs> no, no. If you want, you know, if there was, it, I, I could talk about the, the mission, the, uh, crew two sort of, uh, launch mission that I had. And it was, it was a really fun trip, right? So that was like the first trip that I had. Um, but there was uh, like the first launch trip that I had. And I, I just, like I, I had a car for about, I don't know, 15, like 10 years. I had this old Subaru car, right? And I loved it. Subaru Outback, beautiful car. Had about 200,000 miles on it. But I wanted to go to Florida for this trip, for the Crew 2 trip but I didn't have a good car to get down there. So I worked hard, got my credit score up, you know, did all the things that you had to do. This is like a long story, by the way, this has nothing to do with AX1, but it has something to do with the, like, um, how dedicated, um, like my, my passion for this stuff is, I guess would be the best way to say it. But I worked on, worked on my credit score, worked on all my financials, everything just so I could get a car because there's no rental cars where I was from. I lived in the middle of nowhere. I was in the middle of a forest, literally in upstate New York, got everything ready, bought a new car because I saved up forever for it and put the money down on it, got a new car just so I can go to the crew two mission, the crew two launch. And you would say, Hey, uh, why didn't you just rent a car? And I would say to you, um, there's, there's no rental places around Jim. Thanks so much for that super chat. Appreciate you. 
Hope you're enjoying the stories here. Hope you're enjoying the stories. Jim, thank you so much for that super chat. Of course, super chats help out the show so, so much. Every little bit counts. So thank you so much. If you can't super chat, a like is the best way to do it too. It's the easiest way to do it. If you can't help out with the super chat. So thank you so much, Jim, for your support with that super chat. Helping keep the systems running here at Mission Control. So let's get back to the story, right? So I I ended up buying um, I bought it I bought it. It's not a new car. It was a used car, um, but I bought a car because, and I'm not rich. I'm far from rich. I don't make a lot of money on YouTube, but I I spent the time to build up, you know, to to save up to buy a new car, just for the Crew Two mission, right? And it's brand new. I'm loving it. And uh, I have my camera gear in the back. I don't have a lot of camera gear at that point. I have an M50 camera. It's a Canon M50 and 75 to 200 millimeter lens. So pretty good setup for vlogging and like hanging out and stuff. But the um, but the mission for me was okay. I gotta find a I gotta find a hotel. I gotta book everything, and hopefully they don't cancel the mission, right? Hopefully they don't scrub it. Hopefully they don't postpone it, because I only have so much money. You know, like, I wish I were a rich YouTuber. I wish I could just be like, yeah, whatever. Let's stay an extra five days and hang out in Disney and all that stuff. No, I'm not. I don't make a bunch of money. Just uh, one guy who does this because I love it. So the the mission got postponed. I was down there and I was staying in my hotel room. Got postponed today. I think it was only one day that it was postponed. But like I was saying before, I was staying at sort of like a nicer hotel. You know, and it was, I got a good rate on it. So I was okay with that. Um, but the, um, the next morning I woke up at four fifteen, after going to bed at midnight and my neighbor at that new little hotel that I was telling you about my neighbor at that hotel, she was screaming all night long. She was yelling and screaming about somebody something in her in her phone she was sitting out in front of her apartment in front of her uh, motel room yelling screaming into her phone about something i don't even know what she was talking about so i probably got two hours of sleep that night went down to the launch site um at about i I think it launched at like 5 30 or something so i'm not exactly sure the time but went down there set up my camera gear there's another photographer there down the way and he was like i was so out of it he asked me a couple questions about what kind of camera i had what settings i had all this stuff and i was like dude i don't know i got two hours of sleep <laughs> i was like i hope hope i got the right ones i was like i i did it all like um i had a little little pad you know like a little uh a little notebook that i carried with me with all <clears throat> excuse me with all my settings just so if i do forget it or if i don't have the right frame of mind because i'm super sleepy uh, that I can just use that pad and just use the the right settings. So I set the settings the night before, luckily. And I was like, dude, I don't know. I don't have my my pad with me, and I don't want to touch anything. Because if I touch it, and I'm, if I change anything, I'll mess it up. And if I mess it up, I can't switch it back because I don't know right now because I'm totally out of it. So I'm sitting there. I have this little uh, lawn chair. I'm hanging out with this guy, and uh, this guy and his wife – and super nice, super, super nice uh, people. But I think they're from Maine. And the launch happens. And we're all like screaming and yelling. And there's little kids running around. And it was really exciting. But the beautiful thing is, it was pitch black. You could barely see. Uh, you could see the uh, there's a bridge. And you could see the lights on the bridge. But you couldn't see anything past the lights on the bridge. It was all dark towards uh, Kennedy Space Center, towards the launch complex. Completely dark. Completely black. And all of a sudden, you see it light up. Right? Just bright as the sun. At the bottom of the horizon. Bright as the sun. And as it slowly lifts up, as the rocket slowly lifts up, you can like you could see maybe the tip of the rocket you could see a bright flash though because of the of the uh 
of the launch. And then you start to hear it. You heard uh, the rumble of the uh, of the Falcon 9 as it launched. And as it flew into the air, you could feel it. You could hear it. You could hear, people, hear people's excitement. You could hear people clapping and celebrating. It was a beautiful, beautiful sight. And the cool thing was when the stages separated, I didn't think we were going to be able to see stage one come back. Right. And I know a lot of people have seen the, uh, the images of the plume uh, when they separate and then stage one comes back for a landing. Uh, I didn't think we were going to be able to see it because it was pretty dark that morning. I didn't think we were going to see anything else other than it goes up arcs and then goes away. But the plume started and when that started, I lost it. I was like, what is that? I didn't think I was going to be able to see it. So I freaked out and I said, what is that? And everybody around me, you know, they were like, that's the that's the booster returning. And I was like, no way. And I was super excited because I didn't think I was going to be able to see it. You know, that was, that was my thing, man. I didn't know if I was going to see it. I didn't know if, um, if I was going to see the landing because I knew it landed off the coast, but I didn't know how far off it landed. Like I didn't have any of the trajectory data at that point. I didn't know how far out they were when they landed on the boat. Um, I think it was, of course, I still love you, the landing uh, craft, but I saw it, saw the plume and I saw the rocket, kind of just the shimmer of the rocket, not the whole rocket. You could, could barely see, you could barely make it out with your naked eye but you could see the shimmer of the rocket as it fell back down to earth. And then you saw the, uh, the engines light up again for the return burn. And it was absolutely amazing to see that thing, the burn as it came back down, it was really far away. So it was like a candle in the wind that like an upside down candle falling to the earth. And it was, so cool to see. So watching one of these launches, wa watching a, a Falcon 9 launch, absolutely exhilarating. Absolutely exhilarating. And I'm trying to find the next, um, the next launch around June, in June-ish, uh, right now to see, you know, when I can, uh, you know, when I'll be able to make a trip. Because that's about the right time. Um, that I'll be able to take a trip. So, you know, there's a, let's see here. What do we got? June 1st, Transporter 5 mission. No earlier than June 1st. That would be a really cool one. June 3rd, um, or June 7th, sorry. There's a CRS SPX 25. Falcon 9 Block 5. SLC 40. Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. That would be really neat. Uh, there's one um, CRS XPX uh, 25 from Kennedy Space Center, LC-39A. That would be really neat, too, in uh, June 7th. That'd be really cool. I think that would be cool to go from Texas to Florida to see a launch. Because I'm, like I said, I was in the, I'm in the tip of Texas right now at Starbase, Texas. Did it just undock? Uh, JM, not yet. No, it's going to be a little while. This is uh this is footage from the docking of Axiom One. I should probably put that up there, to so you guys know that, so people don't get uh, confused about that. That's my bad. Let me put that up. Uh, let's see. Un. X One. Docking. Yes. There we go. There we go. All right. Let me put that on there for you. Very good call, though. I like that you're thinking ahead there. I'll just put it up in the top right corner so it's a little, little something. There you go. But it, it, it kind of looks like it's undocking, right? Because it looks like it's going away from something at some points. 
I didn't even notice that. I'm just using it as a uh, as a placeholder. Uh, check out StarshipShirts.com too. Uh, those are that's our merch store. Um, NASA, space flight, SpaceX, all the space flight stuff. Um, check out StarshipShirts.com. You get 20% off just by making an order today because you're on YouTube and because you saw this. So StarshipShirts.com. Cool stuff. Very cool shirts. Uh, we do them all in-house here. All of our designs are in-house. And uh, we like to pay uh, tribute to past space flights and the future as well. So if you're into old space flights, we have stuff from Apollo. We have stuff from Starship, like the Starship engines you see right there. That's from the booster engines. And Max-Q. That's one of the most stresses on the rocket, so we thought we'd pay a little bit of uh, tribute to every rocket that's ever flown. So check them out. That's about it. You know, don't want to don't want to make it into a commercial commercial because that's weird. I don't want to be weird with you guys. It undocked like 50 times <laughs> since this live started. <laughs> yeah, right. It just keeps undocking and then redocking and then undocking. Right. Exactly. Uh, KJ merch. Yeah, exactly. It's good merch, man. And the, the cool thing is it's really good quality stuff. KJ, uh, we wouldn't put anything out there. That's not quality merch. So check that out. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for helping out. Uh, thanks for the likes, everybody. We're up to 57 likes trying to get up to 60. We're at 58. That just happened. And we're waiting for NASA and their coverage of the undocking to begin. We got a feed from NASA tonight. I was emailing with NASA the other day um, with their media uh, team, asking them about the AX-1 on docking and landing and things. And uh, I was like, hey, how can I get a clean feed for, of NASA TV? And um, they pointed me in the right direction. I got a clean feed. All is good in the world. So we have permission for these clean feeds. So we're going to put it up there for you right when the mission starts, the undocking starts. So just hold tight, everybody. Hang tight. We're coming in hot with this undocking of AX-1 private space flight mission to the international space station from a crew dragon you coming on camera jam yeah i will i will um at some point when the show starts the nikola tesla shirt bro yes <laughs> isn't it isn't that amazing so we have we have neil um neil thorne who's the the artist here a digital artist amazing huge space flight fan you know it, it's coming from the heart and when he did the nikola tesla shirt i was like dude come on <laughs> come on <laughs> i laughed so so hard at that because it's so funny like it's 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 such a, a tip of the hat you know to to the past and the future, you know? So that's what I, what we were saying. It's like, look, we got to realize that space flight and technology is, uh, you know, it's always changing. So we have to do a little, little hat tip to them. So thanks for noticing that. That's funny. Nikola Tesla was an OG, you know, yeah, there's, there's some Nikola Tesla stuff out there. That's, uh, just wild, 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 wild stuff. The AX one mission. So AX one axiom space, their Houston, Texas based company, few hours from me. They book rocket rides, so they book you a flight to wherever you want to go. As long as the rocket is capable of it, they'll book this flight for you. They're kind of like 
if you were if you're a little bit older, you'll remember this. And there still are some people out there before before you could book your own flight on an airline, you had to go through a travel agent. Right? Because it was a complicated thing. If I wanted to go from New York to LA, I, I can't just go to my local airport and hop a flight from my airport to New York. And then from New York, I have to buy a ticket and there's a whole, it's a whole thing, you know, like it's a, it's a days long experience just to get a ticket from New York to LA. So they had these people in between, which were brokers, basically they would broker your flight. So you would call up the, um, that either the airline or the, uh, travel agency, and they would set up your whole trip for you. You'd say, I want to, I want to start my trip June 15th in New York city. I want to fly from there to Los Angeles. I want to stay in Los Angeles for seven days. Then I want to return flight from Los Angeles to New York city uh, at eight o'clock at night, whatever, whatever, whatever. You would tell them all that stuff. And these airline or the, uh, the travel agencies, they would put it all together for you. Right? So Axiom space, they're doing that for this flight for the AX one flight that's coming back tomorrow. Uh, they're undocking tonight, but they'll be landing at around one uh, Eastern time, 1 p.m. Eastern time tomorrow. So they do all the training for you. They book the flight for you. They coordinate the flight to the International Space Station. And they work with NASA and all the partners, SpaceX and the, the training crew to get you ready for your flight to the International Space Station or wherever you might want to go. If you want to go to orbit, AX-1 possibly could get that going for you. So that's what this flight was for um, private citizens. Though there were some that were in the space industry before, a uh, former NASA astronaut who's now an Axiom employee, Michael Lopez uh, Alegria, who's, you know, has training, NASA astronaut. Yeah, that's pretty cool. But then there's businessmen, an investor, real estate magnates, just regular people with a bunch of money that booked this trip to space. And they did a bunch of experiments while they're on the space station. It wasn't just a glory filled, uh, fun ride to the international space station, but they do get to spend some time in space and they did experiments. Um, you know, it, it was supposed to be a 10 day mission, but it extended the mission um, you know, about almost an extra, a week launched on April 8th, was supposed to be done on the 18th. Now it's the 24th, almost an extra week. It's like half a week during the first 12 days on the station. Uh, they did a regimented schedule 14 hour per day activities, scientific research, and they did research for hospitals, universities, tech companies, and plus, plus, plus more, et cetera. They also spent time doing a bunch of um, outreach events by video for children and students, which is super important because children and students, that's the future of space flight. So they, they did a bunch of community outreach with that, which is super important. I uh, get the kids excited. But then they had weather delays when they were up there. Uh, so they they got to hang out, basically. They had a little vacation after all this work. 14-hour days. 14 hours a day to do anything? That's a lot of time. So that's 10 hours to relax and sleep, right? So if you're going to get eight hours of sleep per night, which, you know, is recommended, then you have two hours to just relax every day and if you think about it, you're already on the space station. So you're already sort of in this cool new place. So you're sort of on vacation. You know, it's all new to you for 10 days, but you're working 14 hours a day. Uh, talking to people, hanging out, doing the best that you can do during that time and doing, um, you know, research for hospitals, universities, tech companies, et cetera. And you got to do your best during those 14 hours, but they had a couple extra days. So they had a bit more time, um, absorbing the remarkable views of the blue planet. So 
uh, they are done with that and they're undocking tonight. They had the hatch closing a little bit earlier. We caught the end of that one earlier. But now we're waiting for the undocking of AX-1 from the International Space Station. So we, we don't know the exact cost of this either. Um, 55 million per seat is sort of the, the rough estimate. Um, so we're, we're waiting to see what the actual cost was, but it's probably around there, 55 million per seat. So about 200 million, 220 million, 225 million for this whole trip. So if you have 55 million extra, or if you can like, you know, you have a bunch of stocks you can take a loan out on or whatever you got to do. Uh, then go to the space station. What's up, Aruka? Um, why isn't so windy outside and weather say weather says it's clear? Yeah, the weather looks good for tomorrow. Um, for the landing of the AX-1 mission, which they'll be parachuting off the coast of Florida. Weather looks good. The water looks clear. Everything looks good. So... SpaceX and AX-1 and NASA are all go for undocking of the AX-1 mission tonight. you ever seen a shuttle launch no i haven't i used to live there i used to live in florida during the shuttle days um but i didn't unfortunately i didn't get to see a shuttle launch it was kind of in between a break period for them um <laughs> this is observant underwear inside the suits that is for a friend because you know that extra 50 million i've got <laughs> charged me extra nice um i'm not sure what's in the spacex space suit actually I'm not sure. I they do have a bathroom in the in the capsule in the crew dragon. So, and one on the space station, so I'm assuming everything's like you don't have to have that. Uh, do we get to see the full reentry on this spot? No, the reentry will be tomorrow 1 p.m. Eastern time. Um and I may be able to bring you that. It's not a NASA feed, it's a SpaceX and Axiom space feed, so I may be able to bring that to you. Still working with SpaceX to get um, clearance to cover their stuff, to uh, bring you their feed. So, what happens when someone farts on a Crew Dragon? I'm sure, like, I mean, there's there's air that circulated through the Crew Dragon, but it's just like an airplane, you know. Think about an airplane, but also think about if somebody was right next to you in an airplane and that happened on the airplane that's pretty much what happens on a crew dragon so yeah it's uh it's not gonna be good because i mean though they're in a suit you know suits they're not always in their helmets because if they were in the helmets think about that if they're <laughs> what if they were in their helmets the whole time you know and then it wouldn't escape their suit <laughs> they'd be stuck with it so that would be even better <laughs> so yeah so they they'd get stuck <laughs> i i really haven't thought about that i would love to talk with somebody in spacesuit design at spacex i think that'd be really fun i have some contacts that i could probably could probably get to know somebody in that department but just to ask them that question uh jm says thank you for your podcast thank you for uh joining up and hanging out 
<laughs> Erica's face. Yeah, it's okay. No, it's cool. Uh, see, we talk about we talk about everything here, and it's not a stuffy newscast. We're not gonna. I'm not gonna, you know, bore you with details, so to speak. We're gonna have a, a frank and earnest conversation, and it's gonna be, uh, it'll be fun, and we're gonna hang out. And it's a lot different than every other person's podcast. You're part of the show. You know, chat is part of the show, and we cover all the topics, whether it's something silly or we cover things that are amazing, uh, but it's all based around space flight. So whether you love space flight and you love, um, you know, NASA and SpaceX and ULA and whatever, it'll always be informative, uh, but there's a real, like a real, there's a real person on the side of this camera. And I'm just a, I'm a space flight fan just like you. So like questions like that, you know, they're funny. And that's something I, like I would say to my friend, you know, like that's something if you're sitting on my couch and you're like, hey, uh, what do you think happens in the Crew Dragon if somebody, you know, passes wind, so to speak? Uh, first, I would laugh like I did. Uh, and then I would be like, hey, I think it would happen like this. I think this uh <laughs> I think this is a, a good representation of what could happen. So <laughs> Yeah, so you know, we'll have the we'll have the normal conversations, but we'll also have, you know, the the normal Monday, Wednesday and Friday podcasts we go into some detail. You know, there's there's some things going on with like tomorrow I'm going to cover of course I'm going to cover the undocking uh because it's big news. Uh, when they land, gonna try to get all the information about when they land. Um, also, there was a there was a pipe at a Starship Booster Seven, which kind of crumpled. So we'll talk about that a little bit. It was leaked uh, a couple days ago. Talk about that. Let's continue doing um, you know SLS coverage. Continue doing all that stuff. So. You know, we got some, I gotta see if we have a, uh, Let me get this together for you here. If you have any questions about AX1 mission, just let me know. I'll try to get you as much information as I can about it. I'm going to try, 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 try to go to a launch um, in June.
Sit tight, everybody. We will be bringing you coverage of the AX1 undocking as soon as we get the clean feed from NASA. Let's see what this is. Here's a little bit of... Beautiful shots from NASA of the uh, SLS Artemis 1 mission for the wet dress rehearsal. Just a little, little extra something for you guys that I'm working on. And as you can see from these shots, it's wetlands out there where NASA launches the rockets. It's beautiful, beautiful, beautiful area. There you go. Big orange rocket, SLS. Axiom 1 AX1 undocking happening tonight. We're awaiting a clean feed from NASA for this. And I'll be on camera. Coming up is the AX-1 undocking. You're going to be tuning in soon. Very, very soon. Stay tuned, everybody. The undocking will be happening. Amy Fox, thank you so much for that super chat. Do you get a starship? Do you get a starship? Let's find out. You should, in theory, get a starship. Let's see if this is going to happen. It's going to happen. There you go. You get a starship landing, Amy. Thank you so much for that $10 super chat. Your super chat goes directly back into the show to help us produce better videos more videos, and it comes straight out of the StarshipShirts.com, so that's pretty cool too. Helps us out a ton when you help us out with donations, and you get a Starship on screen too. Thanks, Amy. I really do appreciate your support and your generosity. It really means the world to me. Here we go. We got to fade that out. There you go. There was your last Starship. Amazing, Amy. We're coming in hot with the stream ASAP. Directly from Johnson Space Center. A NASA stream will be starting soon. Expedition 67, Axiom Mission 1 undocking from the International Space Station from Johnson Space Center, April 24, 2022 at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time. That's happening in about one minute, so stay tuned, everybody. Get this over to you ASAP.
Mule Skinner Films, thank you so much for your support tonight. I appreciate you and appreciate your support there with the super chat. You are amazing. You get a starship. There you go. You get a starship for your super chat there. Amazing. Really helps out a ton. Thanks, Mule Skinner. Meant to send more? I'm totally cool with just being, you being here. So thank you so much for that. Appreciate you, man. Can we get our likes up to 100? We're at 78 now. Let's try that. Let's try to get our likes up to 100. That'd be amazing. We're pretty close. We're really, really close. All right, we're going to be starting very soon. Get ready. The new chapter begins. SpaceX Axiom 1 undocking from the International Space Station tonight. Sit tight. We're happy. The Mule Skinner, you keep getting those super chat starships. Here we go. We'll go full screen momentarily. We expect Endeavour to push away from the space station at 5.55 p.m. Pacific time with Axiom astronauts Michael Lopez Alegria, Larry Connor, Aton Shiva, and Mark Passy that you see on the screen. A short while ago... A short while ago, the Axiom 1 crew suited up and the Dragon and Station hatches were sealed in preparation for departure. We are joining you from SpaceX's headquarters in Hawthorne, California. My name is Andy Tran and I'm a quality engineer here at SpaceX. Joining me today is Trisha Bhattacharya, a crew systems group lead at Axiom Space. And monitoring the action from NASA's Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas is NASA's public affairs Gary Jordan. Andy, you and I hosted the docking webcast uh, for this mission on April 9th. Quite a lot has happened on station since then. Copy that, Larry. Uh, stand by here while we uh, just talk a little bit about that one on the ground. Quite a lot has happened on station since then, including an extended stay for this crew, as we've all been waiting for good weather around Florida. But it is great to be back with you. Launching from Kennedy Space Center on April 8th and docking to the ISS on April 9th, this crew spent their first eight days conducting over 25 experiments, hosting numerous outreach events, and participating in a variety of technology demonstrations and planetary observations. And since then, the crew has packed away all of their critical payloads, including several for NASA into Dragon Endeavor, and all eyes have been on the weather. Yep, wind speeds have been a challenge for the last several days. And Dragon SpaceX on the big loop with that. 
that we have completed our troubleshooting steps here. On the ground, we're going to swap back to our original configuration, let you know when that is complete, and then have C2 make another comm check back on the big loop. I'll copy. Yeah, Mike, I understand you're going to swap back to the original configuration. Once you do, you'll contact us, and then we'll have C2 try another comm check on the big loop. Good words. So what you're seeing and hearing is the crew resource operations engineer on the right-hand side communicating with the astronauts in the Dragon capsule. Uh, looks like they were troubleshooting some communication issues, but things continuing to progress uh, and, and go well. Uh, but tomorrow is looking like a great day to bring the AX-1 crew home. For return, we look at a number of weather items. Some of the obvious ones are no rain or chance of lightning in the recovery zone, both for the safety of the crew inside the capsule and the recovery teams on the water. We also look for wind speeds less than 10 miles per hour and relatively calm seas so we can safely perform recovery operations, which includes landing a helicopter on the recovery ship to fly our crew back to shore. With, with the weather now looking good, we're very excited to bring you live coverage of the beginning of the return to Earth of AX-1, the first all-private astronaut mission to the International Space Station. This webcast will follow the crew's departure from the ISS and conclude once they've exited the approach ellipsoid, which is the imaginary outer bounder, boundary excuse me, of the ISS. Then tomorrow, Axiom and SpaceX will pick back up with live coverage starting about an hour before splashdown to Dragon share the conclusion the of this loop. historic mission. The ground commands for audio troubleshooting are complete, requesting that seat two make a comm check on the big loop. Now, as we await the undocking of the AX-1 mission, we're trying to get to 100 likes. Once Dragon departs station, the crew's flight home is expected to last a little more than 16 hours. Uh, Dragon's going to use its Draco thrusters uh, to thrust away from the station in a series of carefully choreographed maneuvers or four departure burns to increase the distance between the spacecraft and the space station. Dragon will also execute a phasing burn to lower its orbit and line the spacecraft up with its landing zone. Then the action starts to pick up pace with trunk separation, closure of the nose cone. And Dragon SpaceX on the big loop. Can we get another comm check from seat two on the big loop? We did it, everybody. We got 100 likes. Thank you so much. Keep it going. Keep the like train going. Let's push for 150. That'd be sweet. Thank you. All right, we're looping back into NASA's comm loops. Looks like they're having a little bit of problem, possibly with seat two comms right now, uh, which is um, not characteristic of... twice on the uh, big loop and then prior to that uh, he tried you twice and copy that Larry we're seeing that on the ground and have been talking about that can we go ahead and have uh, LA give us a comm check on dragging the ground and work So it does look like we are continuing to troubleshoot some communication issues. Um, but for tomorrow, uh, after we do the phasing burn, we'll uh, continue with trunk separation, closure of the nose cone, a deorbit burn, re-entry, then deployment of the drogue and main parachutes, and finally splashdown off the coast of Florida, at which point our teams will recover the AX-1 crew. 
Dragon is targeted to splash down off the coast of Florida tomorrow at 10.06 a.m. Pacific time, followed by the crew getting picked up by sea uh, by one of our SpaceX's, uh, by one of SpaceX's recovery vessels. And as a reminder, just like its approach to the International Space Station, Dragon's departure and deorbit is designed to be fully autonomous, requiring no action from the crew on board. Let's go now to Gary Jordan at NASA's Johnson Space Center to hear about how the crew has been preparing for their return and what we can expect from here until Dragon departs from the station. Gary? Okay, hey, thanks, Trisha and Andy. What a wonderful time this is to be with you guys for the end of the Axiom Mission 1. It's been an eventful 15 days on board the International Space Station. They got a lot done, but of course, we've been doing a lot just today and in the previous days to get ready for this moment. Uh, over the past couple of days, the crew has been loading the SpaceX Dragon Endeavor, their capsule for the uh, AX-1 mission, uh, with cargo and just preparing for the undocking sequence. Um, so. So they loaded about 200 pounds of science and hardware on board. Uh, they got in their in their uh, launch and entry suit, uh, and then they, of course, closed the hatch. That happened about 6.26 uh, p.m. Central Time, a little bit earlier. And then, of course, we broke our coverage for the uh, depressurization of the vestibule. Uh, right now, the vestibule in between the Dragon hatch and the, a and the APAS hatch, or the International Space Station hatch, is down to vacuum. But we're in a uh, 30-minute leak check period. Uh, so because of that, we're going to go ahead and delay the undocking time by about 20 minutes. The new target time for undocking the SpaceX Dragon Endeavor tonight is 8.15 p.m. Central Time, 6.15 p.m. Pacific. Um, the teams, again, are in a holding period now as they're undergoing leak checks. There's a little bit of margin built into that, uh, but of course, the, they'll be delaying that undocking about 20 minutes. There's not a one-for-one -one, uh, impact to that splashdown time. They can make it up in the phasing uh, and still splash down right at the time, Andy, that you reported, uh, 1.06 p.m. Eastern Time uh, off the coast of Florida. Uh, within this window right now that we're in, it's about a 90-minute window window for undocking. This is not like the instantaneous launch window that we typically see for launch. There's a lot of flexibility here, uh, and when, of course, we can make it up with the phasing uh, to get our crew members home. Now, they've gone through a lot of uh, steps so far. We've, they've gone through the leak checks of their suits, uh, which was A-OK. -okay. You're hearing a bit of the communication checks. They've been doing that for several hours now, making sure that everything's OK. Uh, looks like they're still working through some of the items with the commander seat, uh, and they'll continue to do so uh, just up until the time of undocking. There's a time after the window for checking the leak in between the vestibule um, that they will perform a go, no-go pull for all of the flight control teams, including the International Space Station teams. It also includes the SpaceX and Axiom teams. Make sure everybody's go for a docking, uh, for an undocking rather, at 8.15 p.m. Central Time tonight. Now, before once we get to that point, once we get to that go, and we actually initiate the command, that command uh, expected to be initiated about 8.10 p.m. Uh, Central Time, 6.10 p.m. Pacific, that starts a sequence for uh, undocking, including umbilical retraction and the 12 hooks that are currently holding the Dragon to the International Space Station to be released six at a time. There's a couple, couple of undocking burns, they're short little pulses to actually physically separate the Dragon from the International Space Station, and then a couple of departure burns to get outside what's called the keep out sphere, and of course, what was mentioned prior, the approach ellipsoid. The approach ellipsoid about a kilometer away from the International Space Station uh, and signifies the end of joint operations, officially NASA's role in all of this, uh, and really we'll be handing it off to the SpaceX teams uh, after that. So we'll be following along uh, live you can see the, the views here of the Dragon um, Endeavor, Dock to the Zenith or space facing side, the crew eagerly awaiting the next steps uh, to get them home. And of course, uh, we got a lot to uncover. We're still in that hold holding period right now for the, um, for the leak checks uh, and we'll hold on to that for a while. Uh, that's expected for another maybe 10, 15 minutes before uh, we can go ahead and proceed for that pole to go for undocking. Andy, like you said, the weather's looking pretty great for tomorrow. 
so we're still trying to undock today. We got that 90 minute window, lots of flexibility for the teams, and we'll be following along every step of the way. We're here in Mission Control Houston, uh, going through the steps for undocking the uh, AX-1 crew from the International Space Station, concluding their long and very productive stay on board the International Space Station. But for now, while we're in this uh, period of monitoring uh, the uh, depressurization, making sure everything's good, why don't we toss it back to Hawthorne uh, for a little bit, and of course, we'll continue to stay here, but Andy and Trisha, back to you. Thanks, Gary. As the crew continues to prepare for undocking, let's get to, let's get to know the crew a little bit better. So first up, Michael Lopez Alegria, serving as commander for this mission is Michael Lopez Alegria, a veteran of three space shuttle flights, one Soyuz flight, and numerous spacewalks. MLA is no stranger to spaceflight. This is not his first trip to the International Space Station. In fact, his last one was Expedition 14, where he also served as mission commander. Let's take a closer look at the commander of AX-1, Michael Lopez Alegria. Michael, I want to know what the first time the feeling was when you got outside of the space shuttle. What was that feeling like? <laughs> you know, most astronauts that have been to space will talk about the overview effect. Basically, it's a, a change in perspective. You know, these experiences are really unique. So I'm trying not to set expectations for the crew because I... The um, AX-1 mission is at a postponement. It's on a hold right now for about another 10 minutes. So if you're just tuning in, if you're just tuning in, the AX-1 mission is on a hold for about another 10 minutes before they resume the uh, countdown and the undocking from the International Space Station. I'm your host, Will Walden from the Space News Pod. And uh, I just want to say hi and thank you for joining up. Thanks for viewing here on the Space News Pod. We have 115 likes. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Appreciate you. Thanks for tuning in tonight. to the AX-1 mission here on the channel. You are amazing. I appreciate you. I put myself down in the corner here so we can talk about some stuff, so we can do some stuff. But I want to I wanna show you that I'm actually here today. So here we go. How you guys doing? There we go. We're doing it today. Got a little green screen action so you can kind of see me here in the corner. What's up with the whole live CNN? So they haven't undocked. They haven't. Un they have not undocked yet. No, they have not. Um, I mean, like the other one, they kept undocking and docking. Yeah, they, we had a. Oh, you know what? I got to turn on a light. That's probably what it is. Got a little. <laughs> Let me reach up here and get the flight. There it is. There we go. We got that light on. Studio light. Studio light. There we go. We're back. We're back, everybody. And when the AX-1 mission comes back, we'll come back, too. These people, they'll be doing commentary as well. But I want to get in here and uh, show you guys that we're actually, okay, it's an actual thing here. I'm going to go back to, um, you know, going to, going to go back to the, the mission as soon as it pops back in here. But for now, but for now, we have some... Uh, has some stuff going on here. So let's just hop in here. Let's just talk about some stuff. How about that? AX-1 mission, let's talk about the poll. Will they undock successfully? 80% said yes, 20% said no. The 20% that said no, let me ask you this. Why did you say no? Why do you think they're not gonna undock? Um, is it because uh, they had a little postponement? Is that what it was? We're waiting on AX-1 and NASA to bring us a feed again of the actual views um, from the International Space Station. 
and from the AX-1 mission, the Crew Dragon that's docked on the side of the space station right now, uh, that is a very important mission because they are private citizens. They paid $55 million each-ish, somewhere around there, to get up there to the International Space Station and to do some science. They did some science. They did some experiments. They did some uh, private corporation stuff up there. They worked for some other companies. They did some experiments for them, did some testing. And now uh, they're just waiting for the Crew Dragon to be ready to undock from the International Space Station and about... I don't know, 10, 15 minutes ish. So stay tuned, everybody. Stay tuned for that. I appreciate you hanging out, stopping by. I have a little bit of a delay. Um, I feel like I have a lot to learn, but it's sketchy per usual. But let's see. There's, well, the thing is, um, there's a lot that can happen uh, at the International Space Station. Um, you know, something small could postpone them for five to 10 minutes. You have to make absolute sure that nothing happens to these astronauts because uh, every small thing really does matter when you're that high up so uh, you're in a space station right now you're on the space station you're in your capsule you're waiting to come back and like there was a, a little comms check that was uh, a little bit off off whack that was um you know uh chair two seat two wasn't communicating properly with the uh, headquarters of nasa so they had to postpone this and going forward, they will get back into the uh, into the swing of things, and we can go back now to SpaceX and their coverage. Oh, maybe not. Maybe not. They just post. They just did it up for like a second, but they're gonna go back, and they're gonna take that away from us. They're doing. Uh... <laughs> they uh, we they went into a profile, so I'm just waiting on that to happen. Um, they got a, a 90 minute undocking window, so they will make it okay. Yeah, exactly. It's not like I said before, there there's, it's not an instantaneous undocking window. They have a lot of time to figure these things out and a lot of time to undock so they can, uh, they can fix the course before they get back down to earth. Um, we saw them undock. Um, no, the, I, I think if you're talking about the stuff at the beginning of this video, JM, it, that was a loading screen basically for this video so that was just a, a video on loop for the loading of this video so um it's re-entry that's the real cue yeah re-entry is tough that's the scariest part right yeah that's the scariest part drink up everybody enjoy hydrate yourself while we wait for this undocking to happen enjoy your night enjoy your sunday we have an amazing, amazing thing happening right now. The first private mission to the International Space Station. There's weather delays. They got to stay up there a few extra days, a bit more time to absorb the views of um, of the Earth. Basically, they get to take photos. They get to take videos. They got to do press conferences. They got to talk to kids from the International Space Station. They got to enlighten people and make people excited about space flight. And that's what they're there for. That they had to do. Uh, you know, experiments for these other companies, um, for SpaceX, for NASA. Uh, the ISS is government funded and operated, so they have to pay for these things. So it's $55 million per seat to get up there, roughly. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's a big price tag for something that, um, that you'll never forget. It's the highlight of your life. But if you have $55 million for a 10 day trip to the ISS, that's pretty sweet. Like if I had $55 million extra, I would go to the ISS. I definitely would. It's worth it. It's worth it. So let me ask you this chat. Give me a Y or an N in chat. Would you go to the international space station if you had the money to go? Um, I, I would go, I would go. I would go. Me click says yes. For show. <laughs> For show. Yes. Too scared. I'm I would be scared too. I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm afraid of heights. So being at the space station so high up, um, I would be I'd be par like terrified the whole time. Be petrified. 
but um, I'd be okay because I know that I'd come back and I would, I would know that um, these people would take care of me. Um, Wendy says, yes. Amy says, yes. I would probably pass out continuously. <laughs> Alessandro, I hear you there. I feel like I would do the same thing. I feel like I would do the same thing. It would be very similar. I'd be like one of those fainting goats. I like, you know, I'd look over this way. I look over that way and I'm like, yeah, hey, everything's fine. And I'll just pass out. I think I'd be very similar. Um, no brainer, but yeah, nice. Nice tin man. Yeah, I feel the same way. It's like, I feel like I could do it. I know I could do it. But at the same time, I don't know if I can do it because it's <laughs> it's one of those, holy cow, I'm going to the International Space Station. You know, one of those kind of things. Um, yeah. So who knows? I probably would. If I had an extra $55 million, though, I don't know. I would, I would definitely do it. I would do it. I don't know. And I would <laughs> keep hearing the line from Torah story. I just lit a rocket rockets. Yeah, exactly. And there it's a very controlled environment, right? So like the, the rocket is beautiful. It's an amazing, uh, an amazing Falcon nine rocket. Everything's cool. Crew dragon. Perfect right? Um, everything is beautiful. The way, the way they launch these rockets now, it's, and I don't want to be that guy, but it's getting boring and that's good. Launching a Falcon 9 rocket, launching and landing a Falcon 9 rocket, it's boring now. It happens all the time. You know, 100 launches, just a few mishaps. It's it's not boring. I shouldn't say boring. It's commonplace now. It's still amazing, absolutely amazing that these rocket launches happen, but the fact that they happen so much and they're so good at it now, it's like watching a plane take off from the airport. It's like, oh, okay. Plane from the airport, pretty normal. Like you can go down, you can drive down to the airport any day. You can walk down to the airport. You can see hundreds of planes flying out. You see them land, see people get in them. You can book a flight. That's kind of what's happening here. This AX-1 mission, that's kind of what's happening with all this private space flight thing. Axiom Space, It's they're in it for the money. This is the next step. This is the next airline. You want to go to space? All right, we'll book you a ticket. Uh, come to Axiom Space. You know, We're going to book you a Falcon 9 flight and we'll go to the ISS, it'll be fine. Don't worry about anything. We'll train you to get up there. Everything is cool. Um, yeah. <laughs> this should be uh, be for free considering the dangers. You just take that risk, you know? Howdy, chat, and we'll appreciate the stream. Swig, welcome back. No, would uh, make my own rockets with that money. You'd make your own with 55 million? I don't think you can make a rocket with 55 million. I don't think that's enough. Not to Not to rain on your parade. But you'd have to hire. I mean, if you could, that would be sweet. I mean, I don't know how good it would be, though. I'm not doubting your your engineering prowess, but there's a possibility that 55 million wouldn't get you a wouldn't get you a good rocket to go to the ISS. Um, but KJ, all the luck to you because if you could pull that off for 55 mil, do it. You're gonna be a rich, rich person. Because if you can make a rocket for 55 million, get people to the ISS. You, you got to market that and you got to make that money. Um, I'd rather go in a time machine, holla at me then, <laughs> right? I truly teared up when I saw the rocket reland and hit its mark, like unreal what they've done. Amy, I agree. I agree. Got to hydrate. If Debs was here, she'd be super chatting and reminding me to hydrate all the time. That's what she does. Also, thanks for the super chats from earlier totally helps out the show mule skinner films amy fox thank you for the super chats also jim cabot thank you for the super chats 100 percent helps the show a ton and we're going to get back to axiom space momentarily and the international space station and we will get back there 
as soon as we can. We're going to tune back in momentarily here. One second. Let me get that for you. Hooking it up. There we go. Let's get back in to the Axiom AX1 flight. The undocking. Is the umbilical itself retract? The for uh, the battery and, and power, and then, of course, for the communications, and then the hooks will start to retract. Tin Man, thank you for the super chat. If you would go to the ISS, would you at least fly Starship across the pond? Eventually. I would eventually. Awesome question. Thank you so much for that. Let's get back into the AX-1. separate the uh, Dragon from the International Space Station. Then we'll go into a couple of departure burns, namely departure burn zero and one, each just last, lasting a couple of seconds, uh, and that will take the Dragon outside of the keep-out sphere and then behind uh, the International Space Station to get eventually below and then start uh, a couple of phasing burns to get in the right orientation, ready for that landing off the coast of Florida. Um, again, we're 20 minutes behind, so we're looking at that undocking sequence to start at 8.10 p.m. Central Time with the physical separation targeted for 8.15 uh, p.m. Central Time. Uh, and then uh, they'll be able to catch up uh, through some of the phasing to, to stick with that landing time that we advertised a little bit after 1 p.m. Uh, Eastern Time. We have about 10 minutes until, about eight minutes actually, until the AX1 undocking procedure begins. And then about five minutes after that, you'll be able to see the difference when they start departing from the International Space Station. Mission Control Houston, we are hearing that there may be some availability to move that undocking time up. Teams are evaluating now to see if we can move the undocking time up five minutes. We'll stand by. As you heard, possible five minutes earlier, so it could be a couple minutes here before the undocking sequence begins. Exciting stuff. And there you have it. You're getting a live look uh, at the SpaceX flight control team in Hawthorne. Uh, the words you just heard relayed up to the crew confirm uh, what was being discussed here on the ground. Uh, the teams are looking to move the undocking time up five minutes. So that sequence that I advertised before is set to start here in about three minutes, five minutes after the hour, 8.05 p.m. Uh, 
Central Time, 6.05 p.m. Pacific. It's a five-minute sequence with the umbilical retraction and the hook retraction until there is physical separation uh, with the International Space Station. That new time uh, for undocking, I, the uh, physical separation at 10 p.m. Central Time. to have a uh, camera view? And stand by one, that should be as soon as we command the uh, undocking sequence. Okay, as soon as we uh, command undocking, standing by. All right, AX1, let's go. Move myself down a little bit. Don't want to get in the way of AX1. Here we go. We're now one minute away for the teams to execute Let's go. the undocking sequence. One minute. Again, it's a five-minute sequence. We're looking at an undock tonight at uh, 8.10 p.m. Central Time, 6.10 p.m. Pacific. This is so cool. I love these kind of things. This is one of my favorite things to do. To watch these undockings, to watch people come back. Advisors are down. This is an automatic sequence once they initiate the command uh, to begin the sequence. The undocking time that we'll report will be the physical separation of SpaceX Dragon Endeavor and the AX-1 crew from the International Space Station. And dock has started. You just heard confirmation of the initiation. The undocking sequence has begun. The umbilicals are retracting. All right, here we go. Undocking has begun. You can kind of see the view of the crew dragon right now. Everything looks good. Let's go AX1. We're in the final moments. Umbilical has been retracted. The first set of hooks, that's six of the 12, are beginning to retract. Ninety-four percent of our poll says AX1 will undock successfully. Six percent says no. Let's go AX1. It's got a little bit of time before they start drifting away from the space station. We may lose signal at some point and not have a, a view of the AX1. It happens sometimes during these live feeds from NASA. So just... Uh, be forewarned that that may happen. It's normal. Waiting for confirmation of the next umbilicals to retract and then. Again, the umbilical has fully retracted and the first uh, six hooks of 12 are also retracting. Each of the hooks takes a little bit more than two minutes to fully retract. Got a little bit of time. Couple minutes here before they're fully retracted, and SpaceX's Crew Dragon is on its way back home to Mother Earth. Splash down outside of Florida on the coast of Florida. You see teams uh, at the International Space Station Flight Control Room in uh, Houston, Texas, as well as the SpaceX Flight Control Room in Hawthorne, California, eagerly watching the undocking sequence. First set of hooks open and nominal. Nominal hooks. 
That's good. That's very good. The first set of hooks you heard, uh, the six of them have retracted nominally. The other six are now driving in work. We're looking for an undocking uh, 8, 10 p.m. Central Time. We're on track to meet that. I just looked at my clock. It's 8, 10 p.m. Central Time now. So hopefully um, they get this done ASAP. That would be amazing. Then they can start drifting away from the International Space Station. Thanks for watching, everybody. Thanks for being part of the AX-1 undocking from the International Space Station. If you like this video, thank you so much. We have 132 likes right now. If we could get 150 by the end of this video, that would be amazing. We were at below 100, then you guys went, came through with the 32 extra. What time is it there? PM or AM? It is 8, 10 PM Central Time and should be undocking here any moment. Full clamp um, and we're about halfway through driving those second set of hooks. Once those are completely driven, uh, the sequence to uh, initiate those burns to physically separate the Dragon from the International Space Station will happen relatively quickly. So we'll stand by to witness that uh, physical separation uh, and the official undocking of the first private astronaut crew from the International Space Station. You know, it's funny. I was going to say the exact same thing. <laughs> it was very similar, very similar to what I was going to say. Get those uh, get those hooks out of there. Retract all the hooks. Do a propulsive uh, push away from the International Space Station. And then it slowly drifts off. And the Space Station drifts away. The Crew Dragon drifts away this way. All hooks open and nominal. And right on time, there we go. physical separation confirmed. 8.10 p.m. Central Time, 6.10 p.m. Pacific. Dragon separation confirmed. Separation. All right, here we go. There it is, physical separation. Are nominal so far. SpaceX Dragon Endeavor and the first private astronaut crew, AX-1, separating from the International Space Station, concluding their 15 days aboard the orbiting laboratory. All right. There we go. Good job, AX1. Nice. Amazing. They did it. 15 days. Depart zero burn complete and nominal. There we go. All right, nominal burn. They're out of there. They're done. They're coming back home to splash down tomorrow about 1 p.m. Eastern time off the coast of Florida. So hopefully we can bring in that feed, but I'm not sure if we got it. We'll see. As you can see, the the dim green light. Nominal burns for the uh, SpaceX Dragon Endeavor. That's a good undock burns in the first departure burn. Depart burn zero, looking good. Depart burn one, coming up in about five minutes. That undocking time was 8.10 p.m. Central Time, 6.10 p.m. Pacific. Uh, the International Space Station was 262 statute miles over the South Atlantic Ocean, west off the coast of Africa. Very cool. Look at that. That looks that looks like a like a crazy spaceship. Doesn't it? That doesn't even look real. It's crazy. Now I wish I wish we had a, a clearer view, but it is not in the sunlight right now, so we don't have a view of it. We do have the lights though, and that's why they have those lights on there. Um so we can see them. You know, we can see the uh crew dragon when it's outside of the International Space Station. Flight controllers are tracking a good departure of SpaceX Dragon Endeavor and the AX-1 crew inside. Everything's looking good. They're 45 meters away from the International Space Station, slowly separating. Love that they have the red and green port and starboard lights like boats and aircraft. Tin Man, I agree. Yeah, that's really cool. It's tradition. You know, it's important to have a tradition. It's very cool. That they did that. They didn't make up, a, you know, didn't do a whole rework of everything. Very cool. Now the next burn should be in about two and a half minutes, I believe, maybe less. 
pushes it away from the International Space Station a little bit more. It should be happening very, very soon. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for staying tuned to the whole uh, undocking tonight. This is our first NASA stream back after a while. So thank you so much for tuning in. I know there wasn't much uh, build up to it on the channel, but um, thank you for uh, tuning in. So yeah, tomorrow actually at noon, we have another show. So if you want to watch live space flight news, make sure to subscribe to the show. I want to get everybody to subscribe. We got a cool show coming up. Everything's building up and we're just waiting for this AX1 uh, next burn to happen. We're coming up on four minutes past the undocking time of uh, the SpaceX Dragon Endeavor and the AX1 crew undocking just uh, four minutes ago. We're expecting that next depart burn coming up in a little bit more than a minute, minute and a half. I was That'll be depart off. burn one that will send the crew out of the keep out sphere, which is a 200 meter zone around the International Space Station with its own set of flight rules. Uh, it'll continue to coast outside of the keep out sphere after that depart burn one uh, to the approach ellipsoid. The approach ellipsoid uh, about a kilometer away. Uh, once it exits the approach ellipsoid that uh, ends the joint operations and, the, and of uh, the International Space Station teams that you see here in Mission Control Houston, uh, it'll be SpaceX uh, Mission Control in Hawthorne and the uh, Axiom Space teams uh, that'll have the responsibility of taking the crew uh, from the approach ellipsoid uh, down to a safe landing off the coast of Florida. Uh, Danny, to answer your question, when is Splashdown, anyone? Tomorrow at one around 1 p.m. Eastern Time. 1 p.m. Eastern Time. Tomorrow is going to be the Splashdown. Takes a little while to get back to Earth. Uh, love you guys. So informative with everything, says Alessandra. Next departure burn is happening in a few seconds. May be able to see it. It's pretty dark, though. Maybe you'll see a little poof. But... We'll see. It's pretty dark. It's pretty dark. Come on. See if they catch it. Ooh, keep it centered. It's going to be moving. Trajectory is looking good. About uh, a little less than 10 seconds. Oh, there we go. We got a little burn. All right, there we go. And there you see it. We got confirmation that depart burn one has started. You're seeing those Draco engines firing. Automated process, by the way. There, uh, it's not this done is by about humans. A Twenty second firing. Yeah. So this is an automated process that's uh, done by uh, SpaceX's software and hardware. SpaceX on the big loop. Depart one burn is complete and nominal. At this time, you do have a go to doff your suits per procedure 4.012. As a reminder, ground will be deactivating the big loop following exit from the approach ellipsoid. SpaceX Endeavor, copy all, proceeding to 4.012. Ancient astronaut. My grandma could fly this dragon. That's the key, right? That's the key to get normal people to fly this thing. So there we go. One. This burn uh, is the last that will take them out of the keep out sphere uh, and the approach ellipsoid, which you heard mentioned on the communications to the crew. In the meantime, it means that a lot of the flight rules uh, for having those suits on during the, this uh, particularly dynamic phase of flight with the undocking burns uh, separating from the International Space Station, that has concluded, uh, so they're good to take off their suits. It's a 16-hour ride home, uh, so they'll want to be comfortable, uh, get out of those suits and stretch. Uh, in the meantime, they'll continue to monitor. Of course, uh, we're getting some, uh, some views, uh, though intermittent, from the inside the Dragon cabin uh, and they'll be able to move about the cabin have a meal uh, and even rest for the last um, 
for the last 15 days ish, they were working 14 hour days on the international space station. So they have 16 hours before they splash down. The cameras external. Not sure with that. We just got confirmation. The dragon. Station Houston on the big loop. Dragon has exited the keepout sphere. All right, there we go. Success. Keep out sphere. It's over. It's out. Outside the keep out sphere. That's good, good news. That's great news. I'm just like you guys. I'm, I'm focused on this thing. So you heard it called up to the crew. The uh, four-member private astronaut crew have exited the uh, keep out sphere. It'll be at about uh, another 13 minutes or so until they exit the approach ellipsoid and officially end uh, joint operations. So once the joint operations are over, SpaceX takes over um, all operations until splashdown. So this used to be a thing that NASA would do on their own. So they can, uh, sorry, I just got some communications coming in. So NASA used to do all this by themselves. They used to do the uh, everything for these flights. And now the commercial crews are taking over. Um, it's sort of like an airline, like NASA and uh, those kind of organizations will kind of be like the air traffic controllers and sort of... Uh, the FAA of space almost not quite the FAA because the FAA is also the FAA of space, but <laughs> uh, NASA will kind of be the partner of these private organizations. So private organizations get to the space station. NASA takes over while they're at the space station, while they're on NASA property, basically, which is, you know, basically the, uh, the uh, airplane hangar, you know, something like that, if you were to consider it or like a, a, uh, what's that called? Uh, airport. There we go. Sort of like an airport. They dock, they hang out, they stay there for a little bit. NASA takes over while they're there. And while they depart, or when they depart, that's onto the airline or SpaceX. So SpaceX would be the airline in this, in this case. So Axiom Space puts together the, the flight. SpaceX flies them. NASA kind of orchestrates everything. So NASA is sort of like the flight control. And um, SpaceX does all the hardware, does all the software, makes sure they get it right, and they do this properly. So when they're out of the keep out sphere, which they are by this time, they made it out, and now they have to go to a little bit further out. In about 10 minutes, they'll be exiting the final uh, sphere of influence from the International Space Station. And then it's all on SpaceX, and uh, they'll be landing them tomorrow in the uh, off the shore of Florida. So don't know an exact location yet, but they'll be off the shore in, in uh, Florida. It's kind of cool. A lot of uh, space flight chasers. The Axiom um, crew is uh, try to just a little less than 400 meters from the International Space Station. They're cruising right now. That was the last departure burn. Here we go. They're really in a coast phase now to get them out of the approach ellipsoid, and then they'll go through a series of, de of additional departure burns and phasing burns to get them in the right orientation for a splashdown off the coast of Florida. Uh, Andy and Trisha, I don't know if you guys were watching, but it was absolutely incredible to see the uh, Axiom crew undock from the International Space Station, especially during a nighttime. You really got to see those Draco engines uh, light up. All right, here we go. So let's let's talk a little bit before SpaceX gets to their their final destination and before they they do the uh, final exit from the sphere of the International Space Station. Um, Danny says, "How much fuel do they have on the Dragon?" I'm not sure exactly how much they have. Um, 
at this point, but they have enough to make it back to Earth. Uh, the Earth pulls them, like the gravity of the Earth basically pulls them back in. And then they have enough to navigate to the certain spot that they have to go to in order to hit the right spot to get back into Earth's atmosphere. Uh, they orbit just enough so they can slow down just enough to use their parachutes, just enough to splash down uh, off the coast of Florida. How does it navigate? Um, basically, um, it's all automated. So this is all high level math that I'm not privy to because I'm not that smart. <laughs> the high level math, uh, not, not my forte, right? So the, uh, orbital mechanics, basically, if you want to, if you want to talk about it like that, orbital mechanics, you come back into earth. Like I was saying before, the earth pulls you back in because of the gravity, and then you have to kind of skip into the earth and, um, go the right trajectory back into the earth and slow down because the atmosphere will slow you down. But at the, you know, at the end of your flight, you have parachutes that'll slow you down back into uh, the uh, the shores, or well, off the coast, I should say, of Florida. So, very cool. They're, they've undocked so far. They're waiting to get out of the sphere of the International Space Station. When they do that, in about 10 minutes, SpaceX is going to take over. Our NASA feed is going to stop. I want to say thank you again to uh, our super chatters tonight. Tin Man, thank you for the five dollars. Thank you, um, Mule Skin Films for one ninety nine. We got Amy Fox with ten. We got uh, we got some more up here. Jim Cavett with one. We got did we get another one? I thought we had another one up here. Well, anyway, thank you everybody. If I missed you, I apologize for that. But thank you so much for all of your um, all of your super chats. Thank you so much for all your likes. We're over one hundred and fifty likes. Wow, I didn't realize that. Thank you so much for that. Over 150 likes. We're at 158. Would be cool. Um, would be cool if we get to 200, but yeah, that's kind of that's asking a little bit much. What I could ask you for though is a sub. Okay, not a sub that you eat, but a subscribe to the channel. That would be really helpful um, because we do these space flight videos Monday, Wednesday, and Friday live. Also starbase stuff live at starbase sometimes also it helps get to um you know it helps get us to the next level so where we can do these launches and departures live in florida at kennedy space center so that's what we're working towards we're working towards a launch in june there's a couple launches coming up in june i would love to take a trip to see the falcon 9 block 5 crs spx 25 launch or the Transporter 5 launch, which are in the beginning of June. So any help is appreciated. So any subs, any likes, anything like that. A like goes a long way, and it's free. A sub, same thing, goes a very long way. Um, you know, the um, you know the, the, the fact that they're doing this as a private company, that AX1 mission is a private mission, Every person on that uh, mission was a paid customer, not even an astronaut. You don't, they didn't have to be an astronaut to do this. You know what I'm saying? They're just the people that just like you and me, but a little bit more money than you and me probably. Each flight is $55 million. People think that's a lot of money, and it is a ton of money. I would never have $55 million in my life. I probably will never make a million dollars in my life, but these people have the money to do it and they're blazing the trail for people in the future to be private astronauts, to get to the International Space Station, to go to space. You know, if it's $55 million now, in 50 years, less than a million, easy. How much was it for the first airline flights? Let me look that up, actually. Let's look that up together. Uh, how much money for first commercial airline flights? It's going to try to... Okay.
All right. I'm going to try to Google this. Okay. So inflation calendar from 1920, the first flight, the first commercial space or uh, air flights, commercial flights were approximately $400 USD in 1920. And then a hundred years later in 2022 ish, it's $5,750. So that's an increase of 1,337.52%. That's an inflation rate of 2.65. So a, a huge amount, 1,337. It's elite. It's elite amount, 1,337% price change, right? So if you had $5,750, that's today's money. That's how much a flight would cost in 1920-ish when flights were, were uh, began. But that flight only lasted 23 minutes. And you would spend almost $6,000 on it for 23 minutes. And it was a junky flight. Let's see. 23 minute flight, it hopped across the Tampa Bay, 18.6 miles for $6,000. Oh man. So think about that when you're thinking about the $55 million that people spend on a space flight now. They spend $55 million. Now, how much would it be 100 years from now? You know, 50 years from now even. It's gonna go down and go down and go down. So 55 million now, it's going to be 10 million eventually, 5 million eventually, 1 million eventually. But you're not just going to go for like a 10 minute flight. You're going to go for a 10 day flight, you know? So it's not a, it's not just a, a quick hop. I mean, they, they might be one starship gets figured out, but it might be, um, might be a little bit longer than that too. You know, some of these hops might be, Instead of an hour that go around the world, do it around the earth, it could be you're on the space station for um, 10 days, 15 days. But also um, in the future, there's possibility that these hops from New York to Tokyo that take an hour on a starship, um, that take all day and all night for a flight now, uh, they could be, you know, at a normal air, air flight price eventually. Ooh. Taking down the big loop shortly. Expect ISS audio traffic to cease. We hope you enjoyed your time with your hosts on Crew 3, and we're looking forward to getting you home. At this time, we also request swapping any audio destinations back to Dragon to Ground when able. Very cool. They made it out. Ooh, they're on their way. All right. Flight looks good. Happy all, Mike, Frank, uh, Zamora, you and the um, team there in Houston, thanks once again for all the support through this um, amazing adventure that we've had even longer and more exciting than we thought. Uh, we really appreciate your professionalism, and uh, with that, we'll sign off. There we go. AX1 is signed off. They're in communication only with SpaceX now. Their NASA communication has been stopped. So soon it will be... Uh, stopping our coverage of the AX-1 undocking and hopefully get you coverage of the landing tomorrow. We'll see what we can do. I'm not 100% sure what's going to be happening there, but there we go. That was successful. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Um, you know, hopefully, hopefully we can get the, um, hopefully we can get the feed tomorrow. So that was awesome. I'm so excited we're back with NASA and we're, we're back with a clean feed from NASA to bring you all the undockings and all the launches. There's a Crew 4 launch coming up. We're going to be covering that for you too. So stay tuned for that. Make sure to subscribe to the channel.
please subscribe to the channel. It takes a second, and you'll get all these launches. Then you'll have commentary, and you'll have every all the cool stuff. So if you sub, good for you. Thank you so much for that. Neil, what's up? Be well, everybody else. Be well as well. <laughs> Does that make sense? Uh, so be back tomorrow, noon CST, Central DT, if you will. So stay tuned. Subscribe. All the space flight news happening tomorrow. We're going to be talking about starships, SpaceX. We're going to be talking about NASA's SLS, the wet dress rehearsal, what they're going to be doing when they're fixing this thing. Uh, we're going to be talking about some Elon Musk stuff, some of his beef that he's had recently with another super billionaire, um, and uh, a bunch more. So stay tuned. Make sure to subscribe. Show's tomorrow at noon CDT. Thanks again, everybody who super chatted. I got you, Tin Man. We got uh, Mule Skin Films, Mule Skinner Films, Amy Fox, and Jim Cavett. Thank you so much for your super chats. Helps out the show a ton. And thanks to everybody who's been watching. Thanks for all the subs. Thanks for all the likes. We're at 173 likes. I thought we were going to get like 30. So thank you so much for that. Appreciate you. We've been here for three and a half years. Not going anywhere. Take care, everybody. I'm out of here for now. This is the ending screen. We have one now. Check this out. Some of these people, all these people actually, have helped us out along the way. We have amazing people. Thanks to the new subs. Samia, thank you for the sub. Predig, thank you for the sub. Judy Brown, thanks for the sub. NL Pena, thanks for the sub. James McCloskey, thanks for the sub. Phil, Dave, Gary, Patty. 2-1 City, Texas, thanks for the subs. Ted, thanks for the Patreon. We got David Littlejohn on Patreon. Cliff on Patreon. Thank you so much for that. Appreciate all of you for all of your support throughout the time that we've been here. Take care. Have a great night, everybody. Tin Man, hit me up on Discord. Let's see if this works. Does this work? Maybe? Yeah, if you guys want to talk more about Spaceflight, hit up the Discord. There you go. Thanks again, everybody. Take care of yourself and each other. Or hit me up on Twitter, at Space News Pod if that's easier for you. Take care, everybody.